It is 12.04. We will start our webinar. We are going to be talking about substation design suite physical. I do have the chat open, so if someone needs to communicate, they can communicate that way, but mostly we will do a Q&A at the end of the webinar. So we will be talking about single mast lightning. That is going to be our uh, main subject. But before we get into that, I am going to show a bolting example. So things have changed with the software, with uh, Substation Design Suite, but mo mostly with uh, Inventor, with uh, performance issues of Inventor have been better since 2018. So I want to talk about bolting quickly as well. So we should be about 40 minutes long, and we, ha we will have a Q&A. I might run past the 40 minutes, but um, whatever it is, this will be recorded. And if you do miss something, it will be recorded and placed on substation uh, of Spatial Business Systems YouTube website. So it's Steve Kaufman talking right now, and uh, <clears throat> we're going to go from that. All right, so let's get into the first topics. Is going to be a bolting example, but very first thing I want to do is just talk about um, running taps with Substation Design Suite. Uh, I, I get I get questions, and I usually try and cover them up in, in webinars if I get a number of questions. <clears throat> so what I want to do is just remind people of the tap tool. If I come up and browse to a tap. I can place a tap fitting on my cables, and I can have that tap fitting. I can roll that fitting over, and I can place a cable on that tap fitting. So I can place a cable from here to maybe another fitting, and I can run like that. What also we can do is place another tap onto the other cable. And I can place that on here. And again, I can roll that over. And now I can place a cable from tap to tap. So I just want to keep make, make sure people realize these this tool is available. If I want to edit that cable, I can edit and flip the direction of a tap. And I can have it like this. So I just want to make sure that is uh, obvious and that we have it. So just some of the questions. The other thing I wanted to bring up, and that was part of my uh, bolting example I wanted to bring up, and that's what I want to get into quickly here as well. So over 2018, there was a number of performance enhancements to Inventor. Uh, 2019, more performance enhancements happened. In 2020, even more came into mostly in the drawing area enhancements in 2019 and 2018, uh, 2018 and 2019 big drawing enhancements. So I want to talk about bolting and bringing bolting in and come up with that example. And if you follow the substation modeling strategy, we want to populate our islands with as much as possible. So I'm going to open up this island, this transformer island, and I'm going to place some bolting on this, for, especially for fittings. So I have some fittings here. You can see them here. There's no bolting on that. Now I'm going to take a quick dimension of this face to this face, you can see it's 2.1 in inches long. So now I can place some bolting. I know what gap I need in my bolting. And this is an example, and I would like to get feedback from you guys on your thoughts on it. So I come into Substation Design Suite. I'm going to come into the Browse, and I'm going to browse for a bolt circle feature. And I'm going to look up my hardware. And what I've done in my library of hardware, I've made bolting assemblies. So here's a bolt assembly, and I've named it. It's half inch, diameter is half inch. The gap is uh, 2.1 inches. So I'm going to bring in this half inch item, and I'm going to hit it here, and there's my bolting attached. Okay? So I got my bolting attached. If I want to come up into the other area, I can do that same thing. I can take a dimension from here to here. It's 1.5 in inches. And I can again do that same item here. I can come in, browse, and add my 
hardware at 2.1, oh no, 1.5, sorry. So a half inch, 1.5 1, 1, 1 diameter. And I can add that here. And I can do that again. So I can come in here and add that hardware. Remember, this is being recorded, so we can always review it then. So we can add that bolting. Or we can add bolting down here for our connections down here if we wanted. So I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm just showing an example. It doesn't have to be exactly the same as this. It doesn't have to be named exactly this. This is just an example. So here's a diameter half inch gap is zero because there's no hardware and there's only two bolts. So I'm going to come in, put that, and I'll have that attached there. <clears throat> so you can see I've attached bolting quite easily. If we look at one of these items, so what I've done to make this, I've simplified the bolting because Everything I look at is performance-wise for a large substation, not a simple three-breaker ring, something like that. I, that's, that. That's a small assembly. I'm thinking about acreage size of a substation, so I want to have a simplified bolting. If you look at the bolts here, and each one is an individual item, so we have a complete bill of material. Let's look at that. So you can see I have a complete bill of all the items. And the bolt is simplified. It is has the right head height, has the right distance across um, flats, the right length. This line here is the length of the thread. So you can vis visually see what that is, and then it's an assembly. Because Substation Design Suite is looking for a plane of holes, I have a, excuse me, I have a bolt circle tool here. This bolt circle tool is what these items are attached to, and this is what the substation design suite uses to place the, the bolting on our assembly. So that, guy, that is right there. If I go in the master, you can see what it is. It's holding these together, and that's what substation design suite is using to place it is that plate. So if I come back into view one, it's gone, and I have that. And that's how it's being placed. So if you guys want to review this, if you want to give me an email shout out, and let, let me know what you guys are thinking if this is workable for you. It's using our normal tools. These are our normal tools for, for uh, placing items. But I just wanted to use it for bolting, and it seems to work fine for me. And again, I've created a library of spacing of hardware. And once you have that library, you will, you're not going to have a great deal of spacing, actually. It's going to be maybe 10 or 12, but we can go from there. And after the after our webinar, we can talk more about that in our questions and answers, but I want to get into the single mast lightning protection. So let's get into that next. If anybody wants an example of my hardware, they can reach out to me and I will give them a course, an example. So what we're going to do is look at single mast light, light, lightning. What we've done in the past is if we're doing a lightning item, what we need is an area of um, posts of lightning mass to create that lightning protection item, all right? If we're going to create this uh, circus tent, this lightning protection item, we need this large area to make it. So what I've had is a number of people come back to me and say, hey, we only have a single mast, or we want a straight line of, um, of lightning items. So I'm showing you a method for that as well now. So I have my single mast, and what I've done in here to get it into that area, I've added four work points to my single mast. And you can see those four work points here. If I look at that sketch, you can see that sketch. You can see that that sketch is a simple square at two inches spacing. And you can knock it down to one inch spacing, but I need that area. So this is a fairly small area that I'm using here. I come up to my above grade tools 
and I look at what I've selected for my uh, points is that I have selected top mass points and those top mass points are these four work points. Right? So I, I selected the, these four these four these four work points as my mass points. So that can be added to any type of structure. And if I zoom out, I can create my single point mass. And we can see what it's covering. What I find when I'm using my lightning protection is that in my settings, I find best results with the uh, faceted surface for RS geometry selected on. I find that as best results for me. It's better for the video card. So anyway, this is a single mast and you can come in. And remember, I only had a two inch size on here. So it's reasonably to be accepted for a lightning shape. If we go further with this, Let's open up another example. So here are four masts in a row, straight line. So we have some users that are doing a straight line of poles or straight, straight line of, of lightning points and creating that. So I'm doing the same thing here. I'm creating those same points. I come into my above grade tools in uh, show mass points, you can see those points are located on all of them. It's kind of hard to see in the, uh, but you can see them turn on and off. So I'm using the same four points and I'm selecting those four points as my uh, lightning mass points and we can do a straight line. Further, I want to go with, with this a little bit further. We'll close this one. And it doesn't need to be four points in a uh, physical structure. It could be four points in space. So if we come in, open this one. Here I don't really have a structured mast. I've only put four points in a part. And then my part consists of only four points and no structure at all. And I can still make that mast. All right, and in this case, I made some points in the middle here. Maybe there's some lower masts. And what's a great thing about doing the four points in space, this type of method, is that you can work out where your lightning masts or your, light, your, your lightning points need to be in a substation where you can maneuver it before you start building your structures and, and moving a structure to what you need it to be. If I went further with this, I'll open up with shield wire. So shield wire is the same thing as what we were talking about before with needing a area for the shield wire to uh, connect as well if I had shield wire in, in, in here. So what I had needed to do to create the shield wire, I had to put two in here to get that shield wire. So what we could do in um, in our uh, models is have the second shield wire placed, but place that as a phantom part in the inventor where it won't be in the bill of material. And we can just make it parallel to uh, the primary one. And we can still have our shield wire um, working the way we want it to work. So if you're using the shield wire, you need to pair it up so that the substation design suite as it stands today, that we can do that rolling sphere around it. So I find it pretty handy to make four points in space to lay out to where I need my points. So the next step I want to get into here, now that we have our shield wire, um, in talking with um, others in my group, and specifically Chris Dakota, he has a method of bringing what the lightning looks like in a drawing. So let's bring it up in a drawing. So I'm going to browse and grab into my drawing world. So here's my drawing example. So I'm going to open this up. And here's my lightning protection in this example. So I'm not going single point. I'm back into the, the normal method of doing it. But it, this will work with, with either way you have it, a single point or uh, 
or four four or three um, three points in a larger area. But if we look at our lightning protection, we, we can see that. So I'm going to come up in the light, lightning protection. You can see that area that it's built, and that's what it's working from. And in this case here, it is not a e equally spaced. It's a little bit offset here. So I wanted to have that just so we can see w what is happening. If I look at my lightning protection, you can see how the, um, the fence here isn't covered by the light, lightning protection. or uh, there could be another spot that's not covered, and it's kind of difficult to see, but it would be worthwhile to be able to see this in a drawing world. And that's where I, I, I was talking to my coworker, Chris Dakota. He came up with this ac excellent method here. So I'm going to come up to open. I'm going to open up the general arrangement drawing here. So here's a drawing, and here I've brought in what the perimeter at 16 feet or 24 feet is. So I looked at my general arrangement and I measured in my general arrangement. Let's turn off that lightning protection item. Let's turn off that. So I looked at my height from my XY plane, which is my base plane for reference. And I went up to where my um, bus work is. And I can come up in advanced settings and change it to meters of feet and it's about 17 feet up all right so I came up with that and that's where we're getting this idea we got 16 foot perimeter 24 foot perimeter so that's base, basically the bus heights at those different heights and for us to be able to do that I followed these four four steps so let's work at making one more of this so maybe we want to make one at 10 feet because 10 feet to the top of top of the fence. So I'm going to come in. I'm going to close this off. I don't need to see this right now. And what we're going to do is open up our protection item. This is the lightning protection item. And there it is here. Now I got a number of items in here already. But what what we've done here is taken a work plane. Here's my work plane at 16 feet, and I projected where it cuts, where the lightning protection item cuts that plane. So if I were to make a new plane at 10 feet, I'm going to come up at 10 feet, and there's my new plane. I'm going to create a sketch on that plane, and I should rename that plane to 10 feet. So I like to put a WP in front and 10 feet, and mainly I put the WP in front just to make my, my uh, plane a little bit easier to select. If I just put one letter there, it's hard to select my plane. So I have my plane here, and I'll create a new sketch on that plane. And the key thing here is to project cut edges. I project cut edges, and there's my 10-foot sketch. I'm going to finish that sketch and come in here. I'm going to right click and, oh, no, I want to rename that to 10 feet, sketch at 10 feet, because we want to rename and know what we're doing. I don't need to see my work plan at 10 feet anymore. I just need to have that sketch visible, and I have that sketch. Now, when I come into my drawing, well, who put undo close to save? So when I come into my drawing, I can bring that sketch into my drawing. So I'm going to come into here, and I need to update. And I should see my sketch at 10 feet and I can include that and there's my 10 foot path all right so it's quite big once I have that included I'm going to right click and and select as edges and once I select it as edges I can change easily the properties of that to be maybe a different line type or a different weight of line so I'm going to just go 
just pick one in here. And then I have that circle as well. So it's, it's really nice to be able to see the size of it. And the key thing here, what I did, I made sure I was offset here to make it look kind of odd shape and see where it's coming in. You can see how the 24 foot perimeter is, is across in the transformer. So anything on the transformer that is above 24 feet high on the outside of that line, we have a risk. So it's a nice way to do that. What then I can do, I'm gonna hit home and save that. What we can do then is say, well, what if we want to look at it, at it the opposite way? What if we want to see where it's covering at other locations? So I created a, another drawing. So let's minimize this drawing and activate my second drawing. So I thought, well, let's see what it is at this work plane here along these masts or at the mid plane mast. And you can see how it's offset and just looking a little bit odd because of the placement of our uh, lightning masts. So you can see now how the you can see the arc coming across here. And I'm following that same method I showed you of bringing in the um, bringing in the lightning protection cut edges into uh, my sketch. And I can see pretty clear that if my fencing was coming straight across here, it would not be covered at this point because it's too low. You can see how that's too low here, but it would be covering it at the, at the back. So it's a different way to portray what we're looking at and it has a record and then you can have a record of what is being covered. So we have the two methods here and then I'll come back to the other method in this method as well. So we're following these four steps, and uh, that's how we created that. So it's fairly kind of um, simple when, when, once you go through it. This is recorded, remember, so that on YouTube you'll be able to review this webinar. So with that, I'm going to leave it as open. It looks like I've got through that fairly quickly. Maybe I went a little bit too fast. But if you, guys, if you guys have a question, you can throw your questions out there on using the webinar tool. So I see a question here. I'm trying to get my window a little bit bigger. I see a question here. What standard do you use for electrical calculation? I take it for electrical calculation, you mean, you mean for the lightning. So that's my first question. So we get this question fairly often. And we don't really do the calculation. What we do is create the rolling sphere. So what, what we need from that is for the calculation to be done in, in your third party software, the, the software that you've been using for the last number of years, and get that information from uh, that, that software for whatever strike radius you, you need it to be. All right, so that's the key thing here. This could also be done with the um, cones and spheres as well. So that's where it's driven from. The other question was related to the bolting, and of course I can share share the bolting graphics if you wish to have them. Um, they're, they're fairly simple, and uh, I can bring those up as well. I came up into, I don't know if I have it even in here. Yeah, I have the bolting in here too. So it's simplified bolting on, on here. I've taken off, uh, uh, the um, uh, chamfers and the fillets that aren't really needed in a bolt. Uh, it doesn't help in the form fitter function of it. It's it's just graphic prettiness, um, cosmetics. Uh, I've, I've removed that in the nut in the in in the in, in the uh, head. If you look at the heads, the uh, in this case, they can be changed. And there's nothing saying that you have to use this bolting. You could use uh, whatever comes out of content center. But what a content center has are those extraneous uh, cosmetic items in it that I'm not a big fan of. Uh, where that really slows you down isn't so much in the graphics anymore for that, um, for those fillets and chamfers and that. It does load up your graphics card, but it's really where it's going to slow down is in the drawing world when you're creating a drawing because Inventor can't, it's not Inventor, it's any graphic software can't draw a straight line, uh, 
curved line. They can only draw straight lines. And so for them to draw a curved line, they got to draw many, many little short straight lines. So if you ask, I can share the bolting hardware here. And that, that another question. Um, could you also include the surface from the lightning protection in the drawing and hide what is behind it in the plan view to see what is not protected? Uh, I did do some work that way with it, and I wasn't very happy with it, but maybe I didn't spend enough time to understand what, what people need. So um, if we get a little more uh, feedback on that, on what is being asked to bring that in, um, I'd like, I, would like, I would like to try that to see what, what, what is going on there. I don't know if that's an answer to it to bring it in, but I don't have that example. I, w I had been playing with it. Lightning protection design is based on IEEE 998. Bolting assemblies should use positional reps. So one bolt assembly, okay. Bolt assemblies should, should use positional reps. So one bolt assembly can accommodate many variations. Well, if that's what you wanted to do, um, the whole method would, would still work as long as you had that plate in there. And that's what the um, substation design suites recognizing is, is this plate here. So you could use your positional reps if that's what you wanted to do. If you're following a library of, of parts though, I, I find positional reps, um, you know, I can find the part I want in here. You're not gonna have that many in the positions because ev everybody's following the, the NEMA standard. So you're gonna have the standard spacing. The thickness is gonna change. So you're gonna have increments of an eighth inch or a sixteenth. I don't think you'd have too many to be able to pick it from a library that you need positional reps. But I think you could add positional reps, certainly. Does a sketch project projection in the IDW work in 2019? Yes, it does. Uh, that that method has been uh, being used. Chris tells me, Chris Ticotti tell, tell, tells me for a number of years. So I would suspect it's good easily to 2016. Uh, the bolt models are my own, but they are included in our training package just because we use them in the training package. So any any of the models we do through the training are yours to keep, right? So you can use them however which way you wish. So no, they're not specific to substation design suite. Anyone can make these. Anyone can use them. Uh, you can also just use um, Content Center again, but Content Center is going to have those uh, chamfers and fillets. Again, if everything I look at is for large assemblies, so a lot of people don't have the liquid cooled, super high tech um, machines that they might use. They might have a uh, little bit cheaper machines, a uh, little less complex m m machines, and I think you'd want to keep it as simple as, as you can for your bolting. So that was a rather short webinar, but uh, I think I've covered everything. Anybody have any other questions? So if, if you wish, you can contact me, and I will send the uh, any bolting to you or the documents. If you come back into here, if we, so we can see it in our drawing. This is the steps I use to create the outline in the drawings for the um, lightning protection area, as well as the single the single mast method I showed with that um, the four work points is able to be seen as well in the video or in the webinar video. Do we have any other questions? So that was a very fast webinar. Okay, so I'm going to say that's the end of the webinar. We'll get it posted on the YouTube channel, on Substation Design Suite YouTube channel. It will be on the Spatial Business Systems YouTube channel. We'll get it up, up there in about a, a less, less, less than a week. It might be even this week we, we get it up there. If you reach out to me, I'll send you a bolt or two. And can send you the entire zipped up assemblies as well, uh, if if that's a need be. But uh, they're nice to have. It's a good simple system, and it will work 
with larger assemblies where, where you have thousands of bolts placed in it. Just because they're simplified and not a heavy for the graphics card or heavy for the, um, the hardware RAM. Can I lo relocate the bolt circle tool in a more appropriate <laughs> location? Okay, it's Dennis. Um, so right now what Dennis is asking is, is why is a bolt circle tool here? It is a item that we want to re reposition it. If you look at what I'm using right here in the software, is this is not the latest release. This is not going to be released. This version that I'm using isn't the latest. That's going to be released, but in February, we will be releasing a new version. Right now, this hasn't had a chance to move over to our above grade tools here, but that's where I would like to see it. We do have an option to move that. That might come out in the spring version, but right now it is um, still here in these two locations. So this is a little foreshadowing. We can see we have an additional tool here to extract work points from our models. If you go up into any of our tools here, there's a, a change in our um, title here. We've done you know, some cosmetic changes, and there's quite a few bugs and fixes done in the next release. So I'm testing that now, and obviously it works well in this case. Any other questions? OK, I have a question. How do I make this work? Do you want to be more clear? When I create a rolling sphere, it adds the sphere down to the XY plane. If the grade in your substation is angled sloped, it doesn't touch all of the ground. Is there a way to get this grade when it's angled? So right now, the substation design suite software for the um, lightning protection will only go to the XY plane. So if you create your objects where you need the um, lightning protection on, you can create that XY plane lower down if, if, if you need it, and then you can cut at where it crosses the slope plane. So you would create your um, lightning protection item below that XY plane. So if you follow the substation modeling strategy, we talk about, um, if you follow the substation modeling strategy, we, we talk about the XY plane being a reference plane or top of concrete plane. If you need that to be lower, for the lightning protection, you need to create the lightning protection in an assembly where that XY plane is below the lowest point of your slope plane, and then you can cut that lightning protection along that line. Extract work points for cables? Is this a new tool? Yes, well, that is a, a, new, a new tool, but uh, Dennis, that's from Dennis. You, you, you should be familiar with it because you and I work, worked with it. So this is going to extract work points of any part that I pick and it's going to grab those work points. So it's going to grab the individual parts. So I, can, I, I would need to pick a part. So it's more for locating um, uh, our, our cable endpoints for control cables and such in our new tool with the utility data hub. Can you verify the height of the 10-foot plane? Well, in this case, I made it on that plane in my work plane. Ah, I think you've uh, caught me on something. I went 10 inches. If that was 10 feet, I'd have to do that again with feet, right? So now I got it at, at feet visibility. I'll delete this one because that one was done at 10 inches. This is what happens when you go fast. Take time or do time, as my grandfather would say. Let's delete this. Let's come up to a new sketch here. I'm going to use the same tool. I'm going to, oh, I'm in the wrong assembly. Sorry, guys. I 
I have to be in the lightning protection item. No, I have it at the right height. Sketch is at 10 feet. I can confirm that. That's 10 feet above the XY. Whether it updates or not, that's an inventor world issue coming into the um, graphics here and then into your drawing world. You can see that it's changed. So I'm going to find that again. And I can change the lightning protection item. Select those edges, and then I can change the properties in the line type. Okay, I, we have we had some really good questions. I like them all. Any other questions before I close it down? All right. Thank you all for coming out. I, I did enjoy the questions, and I'm glad we had questions. If you want to contact me, go ahead, contact me and uh, we can talk about whatever you need related to substation design suite. Have a good day.